A hearty welcome to Gurukul at CEC. We start off where we left off last time, like the discussion on gates. Today, since we have already studied gates, various types of gates like AND, OR, NAND, NOR, ZOR, XNOR, we go forward and we see how the gates are utilized to make decisions. These are the basic building blocks for what we popularly today know as artificial intelligence. This is the hardware part. As we know, artificial intelligence has two parts, the software part as well as the hardware part. So this is the hardware part where we are doing the basic alphabets of artificial intelligence. So one of the most common uses of the gates is to control the flow of data from input to the output. And that includes one very big control, ki whether we want the data to go from input to output or not. So that is the control today we will see how we incorporate into the functioning of the gates. If the data is allowed to pass through to the gate, it is said to be enabled and if the data is not allowed to pass through the gate, then it is said to be inhibited. So we all know that the AND gate gives a high output if and only if all of its inputs are in high state. So in this case, we typically take a two input AND gate wherein one of the inputs has data and the other input is labeled as control. Output is always one, okay? There's only one output. So in this case, we know that the control signal and the data signal can have only two values. That is either zero or one because gates are all digital in nature. So if we look at the truth table, we can see clearly that the output of the AND gate will remain fixed at zero if the control is zero. When control is zero, data can either be zero or one, but irrespective of value of data, the control will ensure that the output remains fixed at zero. Going back a couple of lectures, we all know that in binary logic, that is digital logic, we have only four combinations possible for two input data. For three input data, there will be eight combinations and so on and so forth. So in this case, we see that data and control together can have only four values that is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So in this case, when the control is fixed at 0, as we can see in the truth table, the data irrespective of its value will always give an output fixed at 0. And since the data is not passing from the input to the output, hence the AND gate is said to be inhibited as per our definition from the previous slide. Okay. Now, we turn control, we fix control to be 1. So, in this case, whatever is the data, it is reflected directly at the output. If the data is 0, then output is 0. If the data is 1, then output is 1. Hence, we see that the gate in this case is enabled. That is, it allows data to pass as it is to the output. I hope we are clear with this. We go to the NAND gate. Again, it has what we have done is we have fixed a NOT gate in front of the AND gate to make it a NAND gate. And in this case, we see that the output changes. The control and data again will have four combinations 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. But in this case, we will see that till the time control is 0, whatever 
be the value of data 0 or 1, the output is fixed at 1. So, this is the inhibited condition of the NAND gate. For enabling, we turn the control to 1 and we see that whatever data we have, the output is complement of the data. That is, if for the combination 1 control, 0 data, output is 1. That is, for 0 input data, we have 1 as the output. And for the other case, 1 control data 1, the output is 0. But since the data passes from the input to the output, hence we say that the gate is enabled, although we get complement of the data at the output. Again, we come to OR gate. We know that logical definition of OR gate is that OR gate gives a low output if and only if all of its inputs are low. Otherwise, even if one or many of its inputs are high, the output is high. So, in this case again, we have the four combinations of data and control 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, we see that till the time control is 0, till the time the control is 0 and we have data as 0 or 1, then the output represents the data. That is, for in the enable fashion, if we have control 0, data 0, output is 0. If control is 0, data is 1, output is 1. Hence, data passes from the input to the output unaltered. Inhibit condition occurs when control is fixed at 1. So, in this case, we see that for one control, data 0, output is 1. For one control, data 1, output is still 1. Hence, as soon as we find in, in OR gate that control is fixed at 1, then output is also locked at 1, irrespective of the data so, we have typical digital devices that are known as multiplexers. Before we begin discussion on multiplexers, we find that we also encounter multiplexers or rather we call them multiplexes in real life. The function of the multiplexer is somewhat similar to the multiplexes that we have. In a multiplex, you have many movies playing in the multiplex with 4 screens to 7 screens perhaps. But at a given point of time, you make or we make an informed decision or choice to watch only one movie. Same is the case with multiplexers. We have many data inputs but only one output. For in the multiplex, the movie is the data and we make the choice to watch whichever movie we want to and the output is that we watch only one movie despite having a choice. In multiplexers, we have many input signals and we have certain number of selection lines which allow us to route that particular data to the output. So, multiplexing is required in digital electronics to ensure that we do not leave any connection or any data flow unattended. That is, we are using hardware to the maximum capacity. That is, it is not being wasted or lying idle. So, multiplexer as such means, which is uh, the acronym that we use in these data processing circuits is known as MUX. So, MUX means many into one and it is a circuit which has many inputs but only one output that we choose using control signals or selection lines. So, multiplexing is the process of transmitting a large amount of information over a single line. So, basically how do we define, 
how do we define a multiplexer? We say suppose for example, we say it is a 4 cross 1 mux. 4 cross 1 mux means there are 4 data inputs and only 1 data output. And since this is binary logic, so number of selection lines we can automatically calculate that for 4 inputs there will be 2 selection lines. In the truth table we have shown them as S1 and S0. So, S1 and S0 combination will allow us to choose between the data inputs D0, D1, D2 and D3. So, there can be only 4 combinations as between S1 and S0 that is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, the block diagram is shown in the slide wherein we see that the data inputs are fed on one side of the block diagram and the block diagram has a selection line in this case two selection lines which allow us to choose between which data to forward to a output. For 0 1 combination data D 1 will go to the output for 0 0 it will be D naught for 1 0 it will be D 2 and for 1 1 it will be D 3. So, moving forward from the logic symbol we see that the basic equations will be if z is the output z will be d naught or it is represented as d naught s 1 s naught complement that is when s 1 and s naught are both equal to 0 then we will get z as z as d naught. For z equal to d 1 we will have d 1 s 1 complement and s naught. For 0 1 combination d 1 will be the output and for the, that way adding up all of these individual expressions to get a final expression we get z is equal to d naught s 1 s naught where s 1 and s naught are complement d 1 dot s 1 complement s naught plus d 2 s 1 s naught complement and d naught d 3 s 1 s naught. So, we can just input a particular combination of s 1 and s naught and the only then that expression will survive and rest all of them will go to 0. Suppose we have s 1 equal to 0 and s naught equal to 0 then z is equal to d naught dot 1 dot 1. So, d naught survives and all others d 1 dot 0 plus d 2 dot 0 plus d 3 dot 0 they all become 0. So, we have d naught plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. So, therefore, z is equal to d naught. So, shown here is the typical is the typical cross sectional diagram of a 4 input multiplexer. On the left we can see that we have the lines S1 and S0 and of course since it is a bus architecture. So, whenever we have S1 we also generate S1 complement with that we have S, S0 we also have S0 complement with that. With proper combination we can see that the top that the top AND gate has D naught as the input, the second one has D 1, third D 2 and the lowest one has D 3. The output of all these AND gates are fed into the OR gate. Since this is sum of product formulation is what we are studying. So, SOP architecture demands that everything ends in an OR gate. So, Again taking the same example of S 1 being 1 and S naught being 0 only the third AND gate would be enabled and D 2 would be transmitted to the output that is Z will be equal to D 2. So, this is how with the choice of particular selection lines we are able to make an informed decision 
to transmit a particular data to the output and likewise we have the same thing happening in a multiplex. D0, D1, D2 and D3 are different films which are already fed to the different screens out of which we make an informed decision to choose one particular film to watch and therefore that is the output that we get. So multiplexer ICs also have an enable input to control the operation of the unit. That is when will it process the data and when it will not be processing the data that is it will be in an inhibit condition. So in this case, in this case that particular control unit is known as the strobe. So shown here are certain available ICs which are multiplexers, they are 741578, a typical thing shown here is, is quad, suppose if you look at 74157, it is a quad 2 cross 1 multiplexer and which gives an output which is the same as the input. That is, whereas 74158 is again a quad 2 cross 1 multiplexer, but it has inverted out input or complemented input. Now what is quad 2 cross 1 multiplexer? Quad 2 cross 1 multiplexer means that this particular integrated circuit has 4 gates, 4 multiplexers each of 2 cross 1 characteristics. That is it has 4 sub ICs or sub gates where you have 2 inputs and only 1 selection line to choose between the two inputs to give you one single output. So as we can see that we have 16 cross 1 multiplexer also, we have dual 4 cross 1 multiplexer also, 8 cross 1 multiplexer. So we have a wide choice of multiplexers available for our use. A typical case of quad 2 cross 1 multiplexer we take the 74157. So as you can see, we have the four multiplexers as A0, B0, A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3. We have a strobe here. In the strobe, we have, as you can see, a NOT gate. Before, the strobe is fed into the IC 74157. Now, this phenomena of fixing a, a NOT gate before the signals entry into the IC is characterizes what are known as active low devices. Means that these devices would work if and only if the strobe signal is low. There is a necessity to have this kind of control because we know that many of these ICs or digital devices, they have different power inputs. That is, some can work at 5 volts, some may work at 12 volts, some at 3.3 volts, some at 7 volts. So the design electronics mandates that we have a single reference voltage for switching on the IC and hence the need for active low devices. Since ground is sim same for all the cases, hence we connect the strobe signal to the ground. Internal circuitry then converts this into a high voltage. As we know, there is a knot. Looking at the truth table, we see that till the time the strobe signal is low, that is this active low device, then selection lines S allows us to select either A input or input. As soon as the strobe signal goes high, then the 74157 multiplexer circuit gets inhibited and irrespective of the value of selection line, that is it can be again be 0 or 1. In this case, we have shown x, the output yn is fixed at 0. So, a n b n corresponds to yn, that is a0 b0, it will be y0. A1, B1, it will be Y1, A2, B2 will be Y2, 
and in this case finally A3, B3 will be Y3. So, active law allows us to use the same multiplexer at wide range of voltages. Although the VCC and ground would be fixed, but yet it can be modified to use at different voltage levels. If the switching on, that is, if enabling was happening at different voltages, then this IC could not have been used. So, hence the advantage of active low in concept of active low in digital devices. So, of course, again we have a quad 4 cross 1 multiplexer examples. So, there are many examples that are available on the internet as well as on the books. A typical good book will be Malvino, Malvino, Leach and Saha. There are many books available and internet is full of examples like this. So, in this case also we know 74153 is a dual 4 cross 1 multiplexer. So, in this case we are able to choose between using one single the upper 4 cross 1 multiplexer or the 4 cross 1 multiplexer at the bottom can make a choice first. After the choice is made then since there are 4 inputs 4 cross 1 multiplexer dual means there are 2 4 cross 1 multiplexer and 4 cross 1 multiplexer itself means that there would be 2 selection lines for each multiplexer with a single output. So, you can choose the top multiplexer or you can choose the bottom multiplexer. So, the typical truth table is shown over here. So, we have different G values here 0 0 0 0 and you also have different values of S 1 and S naught corresponding to different values of the output that is A B C D. All right. So, till the time again since this is active low if you look carefully the arrow here shows that it is active low. It, since the time it is active low then we have the output happening or selection lines working till the time the value of G is 0. As soon as the value of G goes high, the 74153 IC gets inhibited and it does not function anymore. So, typically when strobe is equal to 1 which is the G value, then the outputs are disabled and strobe signal specifies that which input sets are to be chosen. It is used to control the operation of the multiplexer unit. We will soon come back with further discussion on multiplexers. Thank you.